What's going on kids? Pastor Jacob here with another Life Group video. This week, we're exploring a promise from God to a man named Abram. I bet a few of you out there have heard of Abram before, but you may know him better as Abraham. When we first meet Abraham, his name is actually Abram, but God later changes it to Abraham. We're gonna be looking at the moments God first came to Abram and gave him a super incredible promise. Okay, we're gonna start in Genesis chapter 12 today. Remember, Genesis is the very first book in your Bible. So you're gonna be looking for the big number 12 after you find Genesis. Take a minute and find Genesis chapter 12. These past few weeks, we've learned about how God created the whole world including the very first people. Do you remember the first people's names? Adam and Eve, that's right. We explored last week about how Adam and Eve did not listen to God. The next several chapters in Genesis tells us all sorts of stuff about people not listening to God over and over again. People just can't seem to stop sinning. But now we get to chapter 12. And remember kids, God had a plan for sin. And now we're gonna to get to see the beginning of that plan. All right, so we get to chapter 12 of Genesis and we zoom in and we're looking at one man. That man is Abram. Abram was just bebopping along, just doing his own thing, when all of a sudden God came to him and changed everything. God comes to Abram and tells him, leave the land of his family and go to this new land that God is going to lead him to. God promises Abram that he will become a great nation. Do you know which nation comes from the family of Abram? Israel. Israel is the nation that comes from Abram's family that God is talking about. When God first comes to Abram and he's talking about making Abram into this great nation, my favorite part is at the end of what God tells him. It's the very end of verse 3. God says, all the people on earth will be blessed through you. God was choosing Abram to be the father of this super important nation, this super important group of people that we know as Israel. But God wasn't just thinking about them. He had a plan for the whole world to know him. And I just love this so much because it shows us that from the very beginning, God was looking out for everyone in the whole world. He wants everyone all over to know him and to be a part of his family. So now we flip over to Genesis chapter 15. So just three chapters over. Abram is talking to God about this promise to be a great nation. And Abram's like, yeah, this is awesome, God, but I just see one really big problem. I don't have any kids. Abram asked God, how is my family supposed to become a nation, millions and millions of people, if I don't even have one kid? God takes Abram outside underneath the starry sky. He tells him, look up, Abram. And God tells him that he would have a child. And from that child, his family would be as big as the number of stars in the sky. And Abram believed God. Now we come to chapter 17, and God comes to Abram again. Abram is 99 years old right now. God says to him, I am the God Almighty, and I will establish my covenant between me and you. Your name will no longer be Abram, but will now be Abraham. I will make you the father of many nations. In the Bible, people's names are very important. They have meaning to them. So Abram's new name, Abraham, meant father of many. And God was reminding Abraham through his new name of the promise that God gave him. God also changes the name of Abraham's wife, Sarah, to Sarah. God promises that she will have a son, and that son's name will be Isaac. God said the promise to make Abraham into a great nation would be fulfilled through Isaac. This is just a great lesson. And this is just one of those stories that we need to always remember whenever we're reading through our Bible. Because almost 
every story that we read in our Bible comes back to this promise that God made to Abraham. I've loved getting to explore the promises that God made with Abraham all those many, many, many years ago. And I can't wait till we get to explore the rest of what the book of Genesis has for us. But for now, let's jump on over to our memory verse. It's memory verse time. Who remembers where our memory verse is for this month? Our verse is in the book of Romans and Romans is in the New Testament. Yes, it comes after the book of Acts and before the book of 1 Corinthians. Our verse is in chapter six and it's verse 23. So take a minute and find Romans six, verse 23. Let's practice our verse together. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Great job. Now let's learn some motions to go along with our verse. Okay, let's start. For the wages of sin is death. Okay, let's do that one more time. So wages, we're putting the back of our hand on top of our other hand. The wages of sin, take your pinky and trace around the palm of your hand. For the wages of sin is death. Okay, so you put one hand flat, stand the other hand up, death. Okay, let's do that one more time. For the wages of sin is death. Great job. Let's learn the next part. Okay, now the second part of our verse. But the gift of God. All right, take your hands, make it a cup, and you're starting up top. You say, but the gift of God is eternal life. All right, that's easy. You got this. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You ready? But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You got that? Take your middle fingers and touch the palm of your hand because that's where the nail went through. Remember, it went through Jesus' hands. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You learned Lord last time. Lord, take two L's and you just trace up your body. Let's put it all together. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Great job. Okay, I want you to practice that this week and then let's jump into craft time. so excited that you're joining me for craft time. Today, Pastor Jacob taught you all about God's covenant with Abraham. If you remember from past weeks, Pastor Jacob taught us that a covenant is basically a pinky promise. Isn't it so cool that God has such a big heart for every single one of us that he wants each and every person to worship him? This is why he promised Abraham that he would make his family huge. God promised to bless Abraham with a big family so that we can all be blessed through him. This week, I thought we would make a night sky because God promised Abraham that his family would be more people than there are stars in the sky. All you need is a piece of black construction paper, some crayons, I would suggest like white or silver or gold, and a different colored construction paper. Oh, and some tape. First, I drew a night sky on my paper. Then I wrote on my bright paper, God promised to bless Abraham so he could bless the world. Genesis 12, 15, and 17. Next, attach the two pieces together. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye!